<laughs> As some of you may know, our sailing adventure finished in March. We had a great eight months living on Haji, but eventually it was time for something new. Originally we planned to go to Canada, as it's a place that we can both work with relative ease, and the idea behind that was that we'd be able to stock up our bank accounts once more. So naturally, a few weeks later, we booked our flights to Japan. Welcome to Ia. So in this video, we're going to answer some of your questions and shed some light on what we're doing here. So obviously a question that we've got a lot is, why Japan? Excellent question, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so while we were in the Caribbean, we were looking for what our next move was going to be. Uh, originally, like we said, we were going to go to Canada uh -huh. to work, make some money. Uh, but then we started looking at other options uh, and came across a site on the internet called workingcouples.com uh, which does target uh, couples specifically for different types of jobs all around the world. Originally we were looking at South America. Mainly because of its proximity to the Caribbean. Right, and it's somewhere we've never been before so we were really looking for something anywhere in Central or South America realistically. Um, but being the holidays, not much international work was coming through, mostly work in the US. So one came through in Japan and we kind of looked at it and thought, yeah, that, that would be kind of cool, it would be an interesting... It was a bit of a joke though. It was. It was like, hey, this is something that we would do, yeah. But it said traditional farmhouse in rural Japan. <laughs> and we thought about it for a day or two and eventually decided, you know what, let's just send an email and, and find out a bit more about it. Like, that's not going to affect anything. There's no harm in just writing and sending someone an email. No, so let's just send an email, get some more information, <laughs> and um, we'll have a good laugh about it. So that's how that went. <laughs> it was totally unplanned, totally unpremeditated. So we, but, got, we, yeah. got, we got this email back from the owner, and it was an essay. But it was brilliant, and it shed a lot of light on things that you wouldn't have known otherwise just from the post. And just the area sounded fascinating in itself, and it's kind of in the middle of the no of nowhere, so I guess it's something that we're both used to, but it would show a very different side to Japan, and that's something that really interests us, like getting out of the tourist traps, out of the well-known cities. Uh, they're places we want to visit, but this is something totally different. And if you've been following us for any amount of time, you know that we never do things the way that everybody else does them. Do it all backwards. Much more fun. Not always intentionally. So? That's how we ended up in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that you know why we're in Japan, uh, the next question a lot of people have is, what are we doing here? Also a good question. Um, people were asking us what we were going to be doing before we were here, and to be honest, we had no idea. Like, we knew that the house needed taken care of and that there was a garden and some land, but we weren't entirely sure. So it was a bit of a leap of faith in coming here, uh, not entirely knowing what our, uh, our role was going to be. But effectively we're caretakers, right? There's there's a house and there's a small cottage, which is a newer build, and we're just taking care of them. We've done some tidying up, some cleaning, and then there's land. Uh, and effectively our garden is on a mountain, more or less. So it's tiered in, what, what have we got, like five separate parts? Uh, we've got five Working separate up. parts. And we're on the house level right now. Probably about 10 tiers. So if you've heard of woofing, which is willing workers on organic farms, you could pretty much equate that to what we're doing. So we've been degrassing and weed whacking or strimming uh, and then planting. So we're trying to focus a lot on local products. So Ia is known for a few different things. One being their potatoes, Ia potatoes. So we're hoping to get some of those in. Uh, then there's also buckwheat. It's a big buckwheat area that I use for making local soba noodles. So hopefully we'll get some of that in later on in the year. But other than that, we're planting fruit trees. We've got yuzu, we've got Japanese lime, cherries, things like that. Uh, and we've just got in some herbs and vegetables that we've put in this past week as well. 
What about, else are we doing? That about sums it up. <laughs> Other than that, it's a great experience to get to know the culture, get to know the country, the people, and that's that's our primary purpose, really. It's it's learning something new, and it's all about experience, really. Yeah, and it's an older area of mm. Japan. It's it still has、uh, bits of the past, whereas the cities、yeah. are all new. They're all.、Uh, Very fast-paced. This is very slow. It's very, very rural. Very quiet, as you can see. Yeah, the people are traditional, and they're still using traditional ways for、yeah. a lot of the farming and the things that they do, which is awesome. Where are we? <laughs> that is a good question. Pretty much the middle of nowhere. But where exactly is Ia?、Uh, so Ia is located on the island of Shikoku, which is considered the southwest of Japan.、Um, We are in between four major major cities:、uh, Tokushima, Takamatsu, Matsuyama, and Kochi. And we are almost equidistant、uh, to all four.、Um, our nearest big town is Ikeda, which is about an hour's drive from here. And we are about 20 minutes from West Ia, which is the main town of Ia. But Ikeda is where we do our food shop. So you mean? Everything that you need, you can get in Ikeda.、Uh, your food. There's a big hardware garden center. You can do clothes shopping. There's a butcher's. There's a big electronic shop.、Um, there's a major station there as well. There are closer stations, but I think that's probably one of the main junctions for this area. Right. The middle of nowhere. The middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Do I ask? Go for it. So everybody wants to know what is the house like. And we've been posting some photos on Facebook and on Instagram. And if you haven't seen, we do have a new Instagram, which is at Ia Valley Japan. There you go, a little bit of advertising, <laughs>、uh, product placement. Good plug. <laughs>、uh, the best way for us to show you the house is to quite literally show you the house. So we'll take you on a, a brief tour. Sounds good. <laughs> like we said, the property is quite steep, so we have land going up here to the tree line. And eventually, we need to level some of that off, and that's going to be a fruit tree orchard. Down here, we've been working on just a little grill area.、Um, it could have the potential to be turned into a veggie garden or something, but it's quite nice to have a flat outdoor area for seating. And then below the main house, our property goes all the way down to the road. So we have our little fruit tree nursery here.、Um, And then the driveway kind of goes down there from the cottage, and there's some more trees, kind of around the side here, and then on the other side of us, that's Kodani-san's house. And then this is the main house, the original house on the property. The main house has two principal rooms. One is the kitchen area here. So it's quite small and basic, but has everything we need. We've just got fridge, freezer, microwave, and just a two burner stove with a small grill. As far as indoor plumbing goes, we just have this one tap in the kitchen, and this actually comes straight from the mountain spring. So that's just the, all the water that we have running to the house, and it's just constantly running. There's a ditch that runs alongside the house, and that feeds the whole hamlet. And the second room here is meant to be a bedroom,、uh, but it's kind of dual purpose at the moment.、Uh, it's a bedroom,、uh, but also our dining room slash where we do all of our work. It's approximately ten tatami mats in size, and tatami mats are just these mats、um, that you see on the floor here. I could count them pretty easily, I suppose. <laughs> Nine tatami mats. Correction: eight tatami mats. And in here we have our laundry room. So again, the water just comes straight from the spring, and our cute little bathroom. It's a very traditional Japanese bath. It's just a small square tub. So we just fill it from the hose here.、It、takes about twenty to twenty-five minutes, and then through the window, we have a timer, and the timer starts the heater. There's a kerosene heater. Again, that takes about half an hour to heat a whole bath. And as is traditional, you have a bowl here and the little seat. So first of all, you wash yourselves, and then 
you can get in the bath once you're clean. Now we'll take you to our favorite room. It's a tool shed, but it's also our toilet. It's just a simple long drop composting toilet, but if you're sitting on it, this is the view you get. It's pretty spectacular. And now we'll take you to the cottage. Watch your head. So here we're in the cottage, which is a new build. It's very cute and has fantastic views. It's been kept simple. We go through sliding screen doors, again, still very traditional. And we just keep our bed out all the time. It's actually about three futons piled on top of each other. But we get to wake up to gorgeous views every morning. These nice sliding doors. We hope you enjoyed that quick tour. We've just got a couple more questions that we're going to answer. Does anybody here speak English? Actually, yeah, we do have a couple of neighbours that speak quite good English and that's a, a really big help to us because it means we can ask them questions, just simple things like getting our gas bottle changed, which we did yesterday. So having a few people that can help us communicate is, is really, really good. Uh, another thing that we've been asked a few times is how we are managing to communicate. So obviously that's one way. I mean, it's like everything when you don't speak the same language. There's lots of this and pointing and... Lots of getting your little booklet out and your dictionary yeah. <laughs> and we, trying to pronounce words that you don't know. Yeah, we carry our little phrase book around a lot which we use when we're talking to the neighbours. Um, otherwise things like Google Translate and stuff like that are helping us. Um, but we're doing our best to learn Japanese as we go. Uh, but, I mean, it's it's a difficult language to master, I think, especially with the, the different alphabet and the, the hiragana, the katagana. And, and we've been here for less than two weeks, so that is we're true. still that learning. That is true, for sure, yeah, yeah. We're, um... It's a slow process, and we've just <laughs> started it. So. It's not going to happen overnight. But we're hopeful, yeah, we're trying our best. <laughs> so that's good. And how do you think the locals feel about us being here? Uh, the locals are all very, very friendly, and even without speaking the same language, they're constantly coming to see what we're doing, uh, talking to us, <laughs> even though we don't understand them. Talking at us a talking lot of the time. Talking at us most of the time. Which is great because we're hearing the language and trying to pick words up, and every time we understand one thing there's lots of excitement. <laughs> but they all seem quite happy to have us here, and especially our our closest neighbours, Kodani-san and Morishita-san. Mm. Yeah, so we, we, we have felt very welcome. Yeah, everybody's the, uh... been really, really nice. Really nice. And that about sums up our first uh, ten days! <laughs> Uh, so if you do have any more questions, fire them at us. Uh, we'd love to answer them for you. <laughs> Make sure you follow us on at Ia Valley Japan on Instagram, as well as our main Instagram account, at It's Plain Sailing. Which we're still updating constantly. We're also posting to our Instagram stories and our Facebook story as much as possible, because we find it a really easy and fun way to keep you all up to date uh, with what's going on here. Uh, and finally, obviously, you can find all about our adventures past and present and future on www.plainsailingblog.com <laughs>